Hi there. Today we're going to start talking about functional groups. This is sort of a large topic. We're going to split it over a series of videos. This is functional groups number one. Now let's break that down a little bit. Some organic compounds are going to contain more than the carbon and the hydrogen that we've been talking about. Table R in your reference table will give you examples of all of these different things. There are nine of them, and we are going to spread them out over a series of videos. Today we're going to examine halides at the top of that chart, alcohols, and ethers. Okay. The first example of a functional group or something that's hanging off of a carbon and hydrogen chain is called a halide. So we have hydrocarbon chain with a group 17 element hanging off of it. So that could be fluorine, it could be chlorine, it could be bromine, or it could be iodine. In table R of your reference table, it will tell you what each of those little prefixes should be. So you'll see here we have bromo used when a bromine is attached, okay, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself there. Now, this is a four carbon chain all single bonded together. In place of one of the understood hydrogens that are all the way around here, a bromine has been attached instead. So instead of just one, two, three, four butane, like it for just a hydrocarbon chain, we have to indicate that there's a bromine on there. And again, we need to number our carbon chain so we can tell people where the bromine is located. This one happens to be 1,2,2-bromobutane. Let's take a look at another example. This one gets a little bit more complicated because I have two chlorines that are attached. So I start out basically naming from the back end and going from right to left. So I see one, two, three carbons all single bonded together. So my parent chain that's here, this is a propane, and that's what I wrote right here. But it also has two chlorines that are in place of some of these understood hydrogens all the way around. So because I have chlorines attached, I call that chloropropane. This one I added a little twist because there are two chlorines, it's called dichloro. And the last, the icing on the cake, you have to indicate with numbers on which carbon each of those chlorines is located. And so this chlorine is on carbon number one, and this chlorine is on carbon number one. So I have one comma one dichloropropane, and that's how you would name both of those structures. The next example is alcohol. Alcohols are hydrocarbon chains that have an OH group that's attached in place of one of the hydrogens that might be there as understood. Okay. Now, when we talk about different types of alcohols, I'm not talking about the difference between vodka and rum. Uh, what we are instead talking about is what exactly is the substance that we're talking about. Just so you know, ethanol with this two carbon chain right here, this is what all drinking alcohols are composed of, and this is valuable information perhaps for when you are over the age of 21. All right, let's start with the smallest alcohol possible. This one is known as methane with our carbon, and we have four groups that come off of it. Three of them right now are understood hydrogens, but we've substituted one of them with an OH group. So instead of calling this methane, we call it methanol. OL ending means that it's an alcohol or it has an OH group hanging off of it. We can move on to our next structure here. The ethane, two carbons single bonded together, lots of hydrogens understood. Now we have an OH group that is hanging off of the first carbon. You'll notice I wrote it a little bit funny. Instead of saying OH, it looks like it says HO. And that's because the carbon must be attached to that oxygen. The oxygen can handle two bonds, the hydrogen cannot. So if I wrote it like this, we would have a totally screwed up structure. Okay, so this ethane that then got an O8 group hanging off of it, this is known as ethanol. It's like ethane, drop that E, O-L ending, ethanol. Again, this is what all of your spirits, whether it be vodka, rum, uh, Jack Daniel, you know, whatever it is, 
These are all drinking alcohol known as ethanol. Okay, your last example here of the alcohol family. This is the alcohol that is used in rubbing alcohol pads. All right, so we have three carbons all in a chain. So this is known as propane, but we then substituted an OH group on for one of the H's. So this becomes one, two, three, propane. The oxygen and the hydrogen are off of the second carbon, so it becomes two propane. We drop the E and it becomes all, two propanol. This is a special note down here. You should definitely be copying this down. The carbon must always bond to the oxygen because that oxygen can have two bonds. The hydrogen can only have one. Okay. Let's move on to our last topic of the day. Ether. Ether is going to be something very different than what we've talked about so far. This is where we're going to have an oxygen that is actually within the carbon chain. So uh, we'll have carbon chains that come off of both sides of this oxygen. So I have one that's drawn here, and I've drawn the oxygen in bright red so you can see it. The carbon, we have a carbon chain on one side that is composed of one carbon. Then on the other side of the O, we have another carbon chain that's composed of two carbons. Okay. Now the way that this is named, you find your shortest carbon chain and name that. So this one with just one carbon, we name it sort of like a branch, like we did in our branched hydrocarbons video. This is known as methyl. This two carbon, almost like a branch, is known as ethyl with the YL ending. Now since both of those branches are joined by an oxygen to make an ether, the last part is just ether. Now over here, I have another example. On this side, we have a two carbon branch, so we call that ethyl. On the other side, it's sort of symmetrical. I have another two carbon branch known as ethyl. So there are a couple ways you could name this. You can call it ethyl ethyl ether, if you'd like to be very specific and methodical, much like we did that one. Or if you'd like to write a little bit less, it is also referred to as diethyl, because there are two of them. So diethyl ether. And now that my boards have stopped attacking me, let's take a look at what I'd like you to do for homework. Okay, in this column, we're gonna draw. So you're gonna take the name and you're gonna translate it into a structure that looks kind of like this. Okay, so I'd like you to draw me butanol. That's an O-L at the end. I would like you to draw me 2,3-diiodopentane. You may want to refer to table R to help you translate that name into a structure. And finally, methyl propyl ether. So you'll have three structures that I would like you to draw. The next thing that I would like you to do is to name these three structures that are here. So when you look at this first structure, you'll see we have a hydrocarbon chain and a special functional group here. Please name that. Be sure to indicate numbers if needed. This one right here with a couple special groups attached, make sure you name that using numbers. All right. And then this functional group down here, pretty clearly indicated with the red oxygen. All right, so six sample problems. Please bring them in and I'll take a look at how you did.